Today we are at the Art Gallery of New South Wales at the Sydney Modern Project building, which is the new clear see-through building. But before that, we were screening the documentary titled Warriors, which is featuring nine martial arts extraordinaires in Australia and also including Cynthia Rothrock. Being a fighter inside of the ring has just always aligned to me being a fighter outside of the ring. You know, this was back in the late 70s and nobody even knew what martial arts were. I came about making the documentary because I really have never seen a group of women come together and talk about a subject matter that is very important to them. A lot of the women that I had a chance to interview, they are like world champions, athletes, now turned mothers, now turned entrepreneurs, but they never get a chance to have their voices seen and heard. So that's why I wanted to pursue that documentary because I really want to see that it's just not you as a martial artist at your highest state, but you as a martial artist, how it goes out into every other area of your life. With the outcome so far, people are really wanting to see warriors in other spaces with other screenings. So it might, I'm looking at potentially finding other ways for it to be screened, not only in Australia, but maybe internationally as well, because it's such a relevant subject matter. And it's, it's something we just haven't seen and heard enough. <laughs> Martial arts only came to me because as a kid growing up, I was very nerdy and I got bullied. And I was always very afraid of, you know, people, uh, other kids, as well as I just didn't have the self-confidence in who I am. And I learned a lot about your strength, building your strength, body control, breath, stance, gaze, the look and feel that we want to communicate through our bodies is very important. And from there, I did a couple of smaller competitions, but then I ended up uh, veering toward film because I know that when it comes to martial arts in the athletic world, it's a lot of dedication. And I think I just wasn't for, that wasn't for me, but I do love acting, I do love performing. So I was able to marry those two together and pursue uh, indie action films where I'm also in front of the camera, but also behind the camera, crafting action sequences as well as in the editing space. <laughs> I've worked in Asia, I've worked in Vietnam and in China, made two movies, one film with Roger Corman, Roger Corman, he's still making films, right, in China too, and looking at the work ethic in Asia, it is super fast and furious, and over there, I had opportunities to step up and sort of shadow direct, and then I realized actually overseas, internationally, if you have the skill and the tenacity, and if you have the can-do attitude, you get so far. Whereas in Australia, sometimes I feel like there's a little bit of the tall poppy syndrome. So if you, you kind of like try too hard or, you know, you tell people what you're doing, people tend to want to cut you down. And I feel like that itself sometimes affects the industry on how it could flourish. So even when I was working on Jackie Chan's film, Bleeding Steel, I was able to observe the different ways the Chinese worked and also the ways how the Australian film industry work and see sort of the nuances. But personally, for me, how to override that would definitely be still in independent action cinema. So the people who are the filmmakers, who are local, who have stories they want to tell, they need to step up and start figuring out how to make their own films and think of it a way to get it in the international because that's the only way internationally you're going to get respect as a filmmaker is if you take a big risk and you put it into your baby project and you see all the way to the end finish the project, get into distribution or get it screened, then that's a winner. My partner Takashi, he's in Las Vegas, but he's going to LA to do a screening of Echo 8. And I'm so proud because I'm looking at the poster and there's Echo 8. And then next to the poster is Donnie Yen's film. And next to that poster is all these cool action films. And then we've got this Australian Aussie $8,000 video low budget film amongst that. And it, I just had that moment, I'm like, holy crap. All the people said that we can't do it. We can do it. And we made it for like, like, like such a small amount of money, but with, with so much passion from people because they believed in it. And I remember when I did that project, I was like, if I don't believe in my project, 
no one's going to believe in my project. So I have to be the first who's super excited, who can see the vision of when it's getting shot, all the way to in post-production for it to really be a reality. And I had to keep on doing that for like, you know, I think it was like four years to keep that momentum going. So my production company is Phoenix Eye Films and it came about because we're like a band of misfits. We couldn't fit into the film industry. I was told personally that I should just only do documentaries and I shouldn't do the action. If I want to do action, just go back to China. I was told that by an executive, right? And I thought, no, I can do it all, why not? So Phoenix Eye came about because we had different people with different skills. They came together without having to change themselves. So we don't have to change to fit ourselves in the mainstream. And we don't have to come together and think of ourselves as a small cog trying to climb a ladder. Everyone in Phoenix Eye, I'm always encouraging them to think about what projects they want to do. And I always tell them, what is it that you, what stories you are really burning to tell? What is it that you're going to put your heart on the line for? I need to know that. Because every person in Phoenix Eye, if you, we come together, we want to showcase that. We don't want to go talk about other people's projects, which is cool too, but we also have to find ways to spend time thinking about what we want and also risking it all and building a team to create the work that we want to see. So Phoenix Eye, like we have all types of people. Some people come in with a disability, autism, all types of things, right? but they still end up making a project or we support them. If they don't have gear, we're like, we've got camera gear. You don't have people, we'll find people. You need a place, we'll find it. We'll find what it is if we know that you're committed to the work that you want to do.